The title of my message this morning is, There is Plenty of Time. I say, Pastor, you're crazy. There is plenty of time. And you'll, 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 you'll understand where I'm coming from. There is plenty of time. But we have to look at um, our, our culture, our society. Anybody travel in Boston? You travel in Boston? Boston is out of control, folks. Now, have you been watching and, and paying attention to the traffic in our city? Everybody's cutting each other off. Everybody's tailgating. Everybody's passing each other on the left side, the right side. Everybody's honking their horn. And I believe it's because everybody's trying to make up that second, that minute. Because everybody is in a rush. Everybody's in a rush. Okay? People are honking the horn. People are passing you through. And it's only 6.15 in the morning. You know, you kind of think you're going to have a really nice day. You know, people are not exposing when they're driving. People are not exposing their 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 their, 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 their rating. They're exposing other things in our city because everybody is rushing. Everybody is rushing. Everybody is trying to recover that last second, that maybe that last minute, instead of us recovering in the Lord. Okay, that's what we need to do. We need to recover so we can. Recover in the Lord instead of recovering in other things. Because if we cover in the Lord, we can come and find rest in the Lord for those of us who are weary and burdened. And I share that message that we can we can come to the Lord because we need rest. But if we don't find that time, are you with me? If we don't find that time, how are we going to find rest? How are we going to come to the Lord and find that rest? And I preached that about eight months ago, about finding that rest. But this time, we're gonna, I'm going to provide with you a biblical uh, uh, application that, you know, that we can properly and accordingly apply our time, our time accordingly. Amen? There is plenty of time. Genesis chapter 1, 5. Listen to this. God called the light day. In the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Okay? There's day, there's night, there's evening, and there's morning. It's the first day. Okay? That means that you have a day, we have a night, I have a night, you have a night, you have a day, you have an evening, you have a morning, and you have a day. Okay? Okay? No one gets more than 24 hours. No one is special. Okay? No one is special. We all have the same amount of time. But what we need to figure out is exactly how to balance this time so we can have plenty of time for other things, specifically for the Lord. But we all have responsibilities. How many people in this room have responsibilities? From the time that clock is in the morning, how much responsibility do you have? Too much. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> you got to get up. Some of us get up at 5, 30, 6 o'clock. That clock rings, and you're out the door, folks. We all have a responsibility. God knows that. But I really think and I believe that if God wanted us to have more time, he wouldn't have created 86,400 seconds. He wouldn't have created, he wouldn't have created 1,444 minutes. He wouldn't have created more time. But he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he knows. He knows exactly what we need. There's no reason for us to extend this clock. Look, okay? It's 12 o'clock right now. Okay? God's in control. All right? God is in control of that clock. God was in control of my worship. Okay? I cannot quench the spirit. I cannot quench what God was doing in our service this morning. Am I going to focus on the clock or am I going to focus on worshiping and asking God to have a breakthrough in our service? Amen? Are we going to worry about those things? Because can I tell you something? This place was heavy this morning. I thank God that it was a great I thank, thank God for the word of God. I thank God for the worship team that they kept pushing. We kept pushing and pushing and removing those obstacles without focusing on the clock. And as a pastor, as a leader, we focus on the clock. I think more importantly, no, no, no. You talk. There's plenty of time. You will get out of here on time today. Amen? No one gets more than 24 hours a day. We just have to figure out our responsibilities. God is not asking us. Can I get that image of that clock right there? God is not asking us to control that clock. To control the hands of the clock, folks. There is plenty of time. 
then it's plenty of time. What we need to do is discipline our time and manage our time correctly. Are you with me? Because it's an opportune time to do things and at the right time. Ecclesiastic 3.1. From the message, this is an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on earth. See, folks, how we spend, you say spend? spend? How we spend our time, how we spend our effort, is a reflection of our priorities that are in place. It's a reflection, folks, because if, if, if I really believe that there is plenty of time for everything. Okay? Now you're gonna see something that makes sense. There's plenty of time for everything. There is a there is a there is plenty of time for the things that are important. Not for everything, but you can make your adjustments say these things are the most important things. So there's plenty of time for these important things. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Okay? There is plenty of time. You may have to cut some things out to make room for time. And if we don't manage our lives correctly and manage the time, folks, you know, um, your life becomes chaotic. Can you say chaotic with me? Chaotic. Your life becomes chaotic. My life becomes chaotic. The church life becomes chaotic. If we don't manage our time, we can be at staff, we can be planning, and we want to do this, we want to do that, the time out, slow down. We are overloading ourselves. We got to look back and see who's on board, who's going to... What, what team do we have to do the things that we need to do in the church? So we have to slow down. We can't overload ourselves. We can't overschedule, folks, because we can't get all excited. We can't, because if not, your life is going to be a chaos. My life is chaos sometimes, okay? Because we are, we are overreacting. We, 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 have, we, we, we rely on our emotions rather than, than, than really understanding true time management so we can have a life, a live a life with purpose and intention instead of overloading emotionally, reaction, and, and, and doing things out of reaction without really understanding, okay, God, do I have enough time? Are you going to open some time for me to take care of this or take care of that? Because there is plenty of time. I love old school brother Charles Purgeon said, serve God by doing common actions in a heavenly spirit. And then, if your daily calling only leaves you cracks and cracks of time, fill them up with holy service. Okay, so, so, so if God, if, if we all have responsibilities from the time you wake up to the time you get home, from the time you take care of your children, go to work, take care of husband, wife, clean the house, do all these things, okay? We have to remember that we have to place God first. But God is telling us that if, even if there's a little crack, okay, can you do something for me? Can you do something for me? Okay, can you make that little simple phone call for that brother that's broken? Can you send a text message, okay? Oh, you, you have that extra 10, 15 minutes, and you're in the living room and stuff like that, and you get ready to go watch, you know, uh, uh, The Bachelorette or The Bachelor or, or whatever the shows that we have on Crazy TV and all that stuff. You have to take that second there, that crack, that, that, that five seconds to send a text message that's going to lift somebody up. Okay, there is plenty of time, folks. Psalms 90.12, listen to this. Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. Last week, we were talking about and sharing to learn the secret of contentment. Okay? That's a good thing to learn. But this week, we want the Lord to teach us. To teach us. Teach us to number our days. Our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. Okay? Time can manage us or we can manage time. Time can be elusive or time can be used for the Lord, for our lives. Because when you look at time, folks, you can't renew time. It's not renewable. You, you just can't. It's not transferable. You can't transfer time. You can't renew time like you renew your license. You can't renew time as you renew things in your life. Every, every two or three years, you get a renewal because of your credit card. Or, or, or you need to renew this. You need to renew that. You just can't renew time, folks. You cannot share it. You cannot take time and put it up on a shelf and take it out again and say, 
oh, this was a good day back five, six, seven, eight days ago, and let me just take a peek at this time that I had. It's all right here, but you can't redeem that time. It's not, you can't recover it. You will not recover it. You can't uh, order a, a, a program. Like I, I, I tee uh, people who, are, who are, do all kinds of things with computers, and they fix computers, and they can recover certain things. Well, let me tell you something we can't recover, folks. We can't recover time. Joel, can we recover time, brother? He's an IT guy. He works with computers, and he knows that, you know, that's, we can't. Okay, let me just put this program here and recover this time. It's not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen. You cannot save it. You cannot put it in your closet. It is unrecoverable because, folks, you can't get it back. Those 86,400 seconds that we have, you cannot get back. You will not recover them back. What you can do is you can wisely use those 86,400 seconds and use them appropriately and use them wisely because time is like a termite. It will kill you. It will eat you up. It will destroy you. And then you're asking yourself, and then we're asking ourselves, what happened with this day? What happened with this week? What happened with this month? What happened with last month? What happened on April 1st? You know what April 1st is? It's not April, it's not April Fools. A quarter of the year has gone by already. Are you with me? Okay? It's not April Fools. A quarter of the year is gone already. Tomorrow, tonight, at midnight, a quarter of the year. And you're probably asking yourself, and you're probably going to ask yourself, wow, the grass is coming up. Amen? Amen? And you're going to ask yourself, what have I been doing with my time? Okay? And I tell you this much, you're not going to be able to recover February, March, what is, no, April, March, uh, February, and January. You're not going to be able to recover those months. You can't appear in your memory. Whether they were good, whether they were bad, whether you had blessing, whether you had trial, yes, yes. Those things are going to be up here, but you won't be able to recover the folks. Managing your time, managing your time is like a budget. You have to budget to make sure that you don't overspend. It keeps you in check. It keeps you aligned with a purpose so you can have a healthy budget, have a healthy lifestyle. The same thing is with, uh, with, with time. We have to manage our time accordingly. We have to prepare accordingly because you're not going to be able to recover. You need to budget your time. Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us spend them as we should. Help us wisely, folks. We need, to, we need to use wisdom. When we manage our time accordingly, something kicks in. There's a shift, okay? You're going to have times of joy. You're going to have time where you say, wow, I spent quality time. This was good. But you're going to have to use your time wisely. Okay? As busy as we are, folks, I had the privilege this, this past Tuesday. I spent four hours with a friend of mine. We had dinner. We spent time in my living room for like four hours. There is plenty of time. And can I tell you something? I'm busy. We're all busy. But you know what? I had some time. I had an awesome, awesome time on Tuesday. On a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night. All we did was have dinner. All we did was hang out in the living room. So, <laughs> just call your time to focus on work. So when things and our priorities are in place and we are handling our time accordingly, we can have joy. Okay? Life is not going to be perfect, but you can rejoice in the Lord. Okay, you can be glad in the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made. We can benefit from it. We can benefit from it. But we have to find a way, folks, on how to manage our time. So then if we can express that joy to our father. Then we can express that joy to your wife, to your daughter, to your son, to your friends, to your family, because you are managing your time accordingly. Don't, don't think that this is a, 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 a 
I'm sharing with you all, Pastor, this is you're making this sound so easy. No, it's not easy. It's doable. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Okay, it's, it's not easy. It's doable. Because things are going to happen. Your life will be interrupted, okay? But you have to make these adjustments, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. I confess in front of this church. I missed my date night last Monday with my wife. Something came up. Okay? Something came up. Oh, oh, she, oh, oh she, 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 I'm, I'm on her priorities. I got to make that thing up. Okay? Because things do happen. Okay? Things do happen. But we just have to make these adjustments, folks. How wisely you use your time, folks, is wisdom. Can you say wisdom? Wisdom. Folks, James chapter 1 5. Listen to this. Is it up there? Yes, it is. Praise God. If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. And he will gladly tell you, for he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. He will not be sent him. Okay, so, so if we need something, we can go to the word of God, okay? And in this case, we're asking for God to give us wisdom so we can manage our time. So it says, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. We can ask him, and he will give it to you. Okay? He will give it to you, but you're going to have to ask. You're going to have to ask God, God, allow me to, 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 to manage my time accordingly. I need wisdom. Okay? I need wisdom. If it, if it means that I have to write everything down, okay? Lord, allow me to take a piece of paper and write things down. Okay? And stay the course. In my office back here, I just erase the circle. I put a circle in the in the office, and I put the things that are a priority. It's not a to-do list. I'm not trying to look important. I'm not trying to look busy. It's these are the things that are a priority this day. I cannot allow anything else come into the circle because if I allow anything to come into the circle, it becomes a three-minute circle, circus, because you're all over the place. So I create this circle, okay? And I'm not trying to refresh you to tell you that I am busy. No, this is important. Engagements are important. I need to make a phone call and call this person. Those things are important. You can do the same thing. Okay? Anybody know Charles Schwab? Okay? An investment company? He hired, listen to this, he hired someone to tell him, hey, how can we become better? How can, I'll pay you whatever you want. Okay? I'll pay you a fee. I'll pay you a fee. If you teach me, and if you can teach my organization on how we can get better, how we can do things, and how we can set a priority. You know what he told me to do? Tell your staff and tell your people. Get a piece of paper. And write things that are important. That are priority. If you think happened to his organization, you walk with a piece of paper, white piece of paper. That's it. There's, there's no secret. It's, it's what is what's important. Time management. What is important, folks? Teach us the number of days to recognize how few they are. Help us to spend as they should, folks. Folks, if we don't manage our time correctly, and if you don't know where your time is going, it's um, it's dangerous. It's wasted. Absolutely, amen. If you don't know where your time is going, this is a problem. You have a problem. We have a problem. I have a problem. Amen? Amen. Listen to what the Godfather, I call him the Godfather of Leadership. It's not Master Miguel, it's John Maxwell. John Maxwell, listen to what he said. If you have small bits of time and consolidate, can you say consolidate, them into a chunk of time that can be spent on something worthwhile, that's like boundary. Okay? If you can save small bits of time, a little time here, a little time here, a little time here, and you consolidate built into a chunk of time that can be spent on something worthwhile, that's how you found money. Let me ask you a question. What would you do with an extra hour? If you had an extra hour tomorrow, you had an extra two hours tomorrow. What would you do if you had an extra hour tomorrow? What would you do if you had an extra half hour tomorrow? What would you do over here if you had an extra 15 minutes tomorrow? of your chaotic day, of your busy day, 
of getting across the city, of going home, getting ready to cook, getting ready to do home with your children, getting ready to do whatever, getting ready for your engaged group, getting ready for whatever. What would you do with an extra 15 minutes that's been given to you? What would you do with that time? What would we do with that time? Let it be an hour, let it be 15 minutes, let it be a minute. Folks, I don't know. What would it be? What would it be? There is going to be time, folks, that if you start looking at the life of Jesus, Jesus was about not just time management, but life management. Life management. Because I don't think back then people wore watches, they didn't have their alarms on their iPhones, none of that stuff. Oh, I watched it back then. It was all about life management. And if you look at the life of Jesus, look at how much he did. The relationships that he did. The things that he did. The people that he walked with. All the things that Jesus did. Okay? He lived a life, a pretty busy life. But he balanced his time. Think about that. Do you honestly think Jesus was in a rush? There was no Ubers back then. There were no cars back then. Jesus was never in a rush. Huh? Jesus was never in a rush. Think about how he, how busy this man was. Think about it. Think about through the Gospels of all the things that he did, of all the miracles that he that, that he did in, in the old in the in the New Testament, in the Gospels. Thirty-seven miracles. You guys know them. He walked on water. He healed the sick. He, he rose people back from the dead. He was all over the place. He was busy, but he was never in a rush, folks. He was never in a rush. Life management. He managed his time as best as he could. Think about it. He was in, he was in ministry for three years. Three years. And he did so much in three years. Talk about life management. Talk about managing time accordingly. Three years. And he did so much. So much, folks. I want to give you this morning three tips to manage time for your life. The first tip is this. The first tip to manage your life is to make an appointment with God in prayer. That's the first tip. Okay? You need to schedule that appointment with God. And can I tell you something? He is the only physician in the world that you don't need an appointment with. You don't have to call your insurance carrier to make an appointment. You don't have to call the secretary. You don't have to call anybody. You don't need a referral. You don't need absolutely nothing. All you need to do is get on your knees and make an appointment with him, and he's there. Okay? He doesn't tell you. He doesn't tell us, yeah, you have an appointment in, a, in about three or four hours. You have an appointment next week. I can't get to you today. Okay? Our appointments are three months out. Okay? What we need to do is to manage our time effectively is to pray. Okay? Make an appointment with the Lord. Schedule your day. Schedule your time with the Lord. It is He who is going to equip you so you can carry off and take off on your day. He's the one, but it has to start with prayer. He's going to direct your day, folks. The worst thing that can happen to you is think that you can manage your day and your time. The worst thing you can do that you can manage your time and your day. That day belongs to the Lord. That day has been gifted to you, it's been gifted to us. So why don't we include our Heavenly Father who has blessed you with waking up in the morning and opening your eyes and the first priority, the first thing that we need to do, okay, is make an appointment with Him. Okay? And we all have cell phones here, folks. We all have cell phones, man. I, I tell you, and I really believe that, you know, maybe you should put your phone on airplane mode and that, that you don't get interrupted when you wake up your phone, when you wake up first thing in the morning. It is the word of God that you're opening up, okay? Before you even step into the bathroom or doing anything. And if you want to go to the bathroom, take your cell phone and have to deal with the bathroom, praise God. Praise God, okay? God is not going to tell you, oh, no, wait a minute, I got to wait till you finish. God ain't going to do that, okay? God is not going to do that. Okay? God is going to listen to your to your prayer request. Amen? Amen. Psalm 55, 17 says, I will pray morning, noon, and night, pleading aloud with God, and he will hear and answer, folks. So we can pray in morning, noon, and night, folks. Time, the time belongs to the Lord. It does not belong to us, folks. 
We can ask him for wisdom. We can ask him for wisdom through prayer. Okay? It starts with prayer. It is a gift from God. Okay? And God will give you the opportunity for you to manage your time accordingly. But it has to start with prayer, folks. And when you're doing things, if you allow God to control your life, your time, okay, you're not going to need to watch. You're not going to need to watch because God is in control of your life, your time, your desires. Trust me, does God want you to get home and prepare that meal for, for your for your family? Absolutely. Does God want you to get across the city safely? Absolutely. Does God want you to spend some time with your family, have family time? But we also have to open up some time for him. And if we do it accordingly, and if we do it the right way, okay, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to make some kind of adjustment. But there is plenty of time. There is plenty of time. This week, Actually, the end of last week was a busy week. And I can show you text messages. My wife goes, wow, it was crazy. We kind of survive. <laughs> okay? But there is plenty of time. God will make a way because you don't know. You just don't know when God is going to call you to do something. And you're going to need that crack of time for God to use you. It happened to me and my wife. And they take my mom. They take my mom. You can handle this, the hospitals, you can ask me for these things. But my, my, my wife is calling you to go all the way to Saugus, Massachusetts, and you need to go and pray for this family. They gave the uh, person <laughs> about between one and four weeks to live. So I am in the middle of the expressway. Do I go and see my mom at Boston Medical, or do I go and pray for this woman? And I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, give me. Can you hook me up, Lord? How am I going to do this? And I'm like, I'm, and then I call my wife, and my wife goes, I said, go to Sardis. And I don't think it was my wife that was speaking. It was, it was the Lord that was speaking. And I'm on my way, but Lord, you know, uh, you give it uh, maybe a month to live. I make my way up there. And folks, that's all we needed was just that little crack. I get up to the house. The family's there. The house is full. I end up praying for the family. I end up praying for the to the woman there, um, it was a beautiful thing. Okay? It was a beautiful thing. Okay? God made room for that to happen. So when we're in service on Sunday morning, and we get a text from the family that says, We're so grateful that you came to pray for my mom. My mom wants to be with you. And it wasn't one week, three weeks, four weeks, or a month. Okay? God makes room. There is plenty of time. So be aware of the fact that the Lord gives you. So God be the glory for this testimony. Okay? It's not about me. I was in a fork. This way to Boston or that way up on North. Okay? My mom is, my mama. She's a boy. I love my mom. My mom was in the hospital before the age. But the Lord made everything happen. I'm going to make room. I'm going to make time for you. There is plenty of time for you to get over there and, and back to the show take you up. There's plenty of time, folks. Oh. I, I, I thought I had a complaint. Just a this one. Praise God. Okay. 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 Decline. I'm sorry, bro. Decline. <laughs> Bye. Um. So I apologize, guys. The second tip to manage time for your life. You guys gotta show me how to do it, but we sure don't get the show. I had an appointment when I did. The second tip to manage time for your life is to plan your day. Plan your day, folks. Luke 14, 28 through 30. Listen to this. If there's anyone here who's planning to build a new house, doesn't first sit down and figure the cost. These two keep words here. First, sit down and figure the cost so you'll know if you can complete it. If you only get the foundation laid and then run out, of, run out of money, you're going to look pretty foolish. Everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He started something he couldn't finish, folks. Is there anyone here who's planning the little house? And if he doesn't plan, and if he doesn't do it accordingly, and if he doesn't figure it out, how is it going to work? So you have to plan your day. You have to pray, you have to plan your day, you just can't, you just can't get up and say, okay, what am I doing today? 
Folks, if you are going to be healthy, okay, as a believer in the Lord, you need to plan out your day. You need to plan your day. With prayer, you need to plan whatever the Lord calls you to do. And that includes getting up with kids in the morning. That includes getting up with kids in the morning. You got to plan for that too. Those are all things. We all have all types of responsibilities, but we have to plan accordingly. Listen to this. It's not up there. The plans of the diligent, the diligent certainly lead to profit. The plans of the diligent certainly lead to profit. But anyone who is reckless certainly needs to become poor. So if we're reckless with our time, okay, and if we're not diligent, how are we going to profit and benefit from extra time? How, how, we have to plan, folks. Listen to this from the message. Careful planning puts you ahead in a long run. Hurry and scurry puts you, puts you further behind. So if you're in a hurry, and if you're always in a rush, and if you're not planning, and if you're not doing things wisely with your time, you're always going to be in a rush. You're always going to have struggles. And can I tell you something? I taught my son. I taught my son the cushion. It's called the cushion. Did you say cushion? Cushion. I told my son, and I taught him the cushion. Okay? Give yourself that cushion wherever you go. If you have an appointment, give yourself a cushion so you'll be there on time. Give yourself a cushion, a half an hour cushion. Okay? And my son just started working at Boston Medical Center. Okay? And because of this cushion, because that's what they told him, they told him, listen, you've been here on time, you've never missed a day, we're going to hire you full time. They had been there, people there, they had been people there for three years. And they gave him a position for someone who's been there for eight months, and that's because they noticed, wait a minute, this kid's always on time, half an hour early, okay? Never, never calls him sick, okay? They hired him, they love him, the nurses love him there, okay? All because of that cushion. Let me tell you about the cushion. This morning, he loses his wallet and his, and his, and his, and his keys. He can't find them. Don't ask me how they got into a laundry basket. So we're doing an all-out search this morning, okay? I, I love to come to church early at 8 o'clock in the morning to be here on time and stuff like that. So my son is going crazy looking for, for his keys. But because he's got this, he's got, he's got this, his, his, this mentality, he's got this, this good, it's a good healthy habit of getting up a little extra early. Listen, he was going crazy. Looking for these keys. We had to call Veronica this morning. Veronica, okay, he came through the doors. What else did he do? Blah, 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 blah. I thought I was at work trying to do an investigation. Looking for some keys and some wallet. I'm going crazy. I got to go. To but because he woke up extra early, and it's a habit of him of waking up extra early, okay? We found this key. He got his wallet. He drove me here to the church, and he was still 45 minutes early to work because of that cushion. And that's exactly what needs to happen to us because, folks, you have a responsibility. We all have responsibilities, folks. We all have 80, 86,400 seconds. They are precious, folks. They cannot be uh, uh, redeemed, folks. It is a gift that you have. You have to manage this time accordingly, okay? We have to, okay? And listen, we don't live in this perfect world. Things come up. But what happens if you give yourself a cushion, okay? And if you're managing your time accordingly, Okay? God's going to bless you. Thank God we found keys. We found his wallet. He made it to work. I made it to church. And he was still 45 minutes to work on time because of that cushion. Because we're not in a rush. We're not trying to do things in a rush. Folks, allow room for interruptions because they're going to happen. But I call that that cushion, folks. It's that cushion. Pastor Andre, can you come up here? The third, the third tip to manage the time for your life is to prioritize your day. Prioritize your day. That word priority is means that you know which things are important and which things are not that important. Oh, they're important. What are the things that are not important? Okay? We all know our first priority is to see first as people in this question. Go ahead. We need to pray, we need to plan, we need to prioritize, folks. And it's not making this list that that shit. It's prioritizing your own responsibilities. You know what they got. I'm not here to make you do a list. What is your responsibility list? Not your to do list, because you can have a to do list and not do the to do list. 
But when you have a responsibility, you attack those responsibilities because they are important to you and to your day. They're important to you. They're responsibility. Okay? And when our priorities are not in place, they're not healthy, they're not going to be clear, folks, it causes a lot of stress. How many of us can get stressed out? Can I raise my second hand too? How many of us can get stressed out? And I really believe it's because we are not building and prioritizing that foundation of the I really do. Because we all have 86,400 seconds for every person in this room. If you have more time than that, let me know. Let me know. Okay? Each minute counts. Each minute counts, folks. Because the things in your life, and the things in my life, and the things in the life of this church, Pastor Michelle was saying, what are these obstacles that are in front of you? And I believe, I never shared it with that. I believe it's, it, it's time. Because we're always in a rush. We're not making time for what's really, really, really a priority. Folks, you were given 86,400 seconds, folks. You need to make time to pray. You need to make time to plan. And we need to make time to prioritize what really is important. And sometimes you're going to have to cut off certain things in your life. Okay? You may think, you may think, you may think that everything is a priority, things are important. Okay? I get a lot of phone calls. And not that I speak, I, I look at my calls and I look them and, and I say to myself, okay, who's number one, who's number two? I got a friend of mine, he called me twice this week. <laughs> And I know what he wants to talk to me about. He wants to talk to me about how bad the Celtics are doing. <laughs> that's a problem. But guess what? Guess what? Yeah, guess what? But tomorrow, tomorrow, because I have made some room, okay? I'm not just going to talk to him. I'm going to have a cup of coffee while he's talking to me. And let's talk about the Celtics. Mm -hmm. But my mom was a priority. This church was a priority. The people who needed us this week in this church was a priority, Okay? All those things were important. But we have to pray, we have to plan, and we have to prioritize, folks. And sometimes you're going to have to cut and prune certain things. Listen to John chapter 15, 1 through 2. It's one of the most interesting statements about priority. I am a true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts, them, he cuts off every branch in me and bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. The same principle applies to us, folks. Okay? You're going to have to prune some of your activities and some of your commitments that you need to prune so you can become more productive, so you can become more creative in what God is calling you to do. And if God gives you a little crack, just a little open door, take advantage of that because you don't know what's going to come out of that. How that crack's going to become wide open and God is going to bless you, you, your family, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know. And some of us here need a little bit of crack open so you can start doing ministry in the church. We need a lot of help in this church, folks. We need a lot of work. We need help in the guest room, our guest uh, uh, booth over there, folks. We need people. We, we, we need people upstairs, okay? You know, I was a little hectic this morning. You know, we need help, folks. We need people plugged into ministry, man. And if God gives you that extra hour a month or that extra hour in a month and you can give, give Rosa a relief at that door and you can smile over the Christ of God, here you go. Man, do you know what that can do to, to, to your sister and brother in Christ? Do you know what we, what, what, what we can do when we work together? We had an usher miss, missing this morning. The angel comes up. Hey, angel, I gave him a look. He already knows. Folks, we need each other. We need each other. Folks, and sometimes you need to prune certain things in your life and in our lives because there is plenty of time. There is plenty of time, folks. If you pray, if you plan, and you prioritize. I have a question for you this morning. How are you spending your time? Do you know that the average person lasts about 75 years? Okay, you're healthy, you last about 75 years. That means 
you will have 26,700 days. You will have 640,800 hours by the time you're 72. And 38,448,000 seconds to live. There's plenty of time, folks. There is plenty of time. But we have to manage our time accordingly, folks. And if you think of the word time, think of the T as treasure. Think of the I as an investment. Think of the M as a management. And think of the E as enjoy. So if you treasure, if you invest, and if you manage your time, T I M, and then E, and enjoy your life. Is that going to be perfect? Hey, listen, folks, tomorrow's my day. Y'all got to work. <laughs> Y'all have to go to work. Things are going to happen. But if you give yourself cushion, if you discipline yourself, in time, it's not about the clock. It's about life management. It's about living your life to the fullest potential. 